So, hey everybody, I'm Adam Frederick, one of the Cornea Fellows. If you don't know me already, I'm gonna go through this really quickly because it's not that complicated and I think the discussion is gonna be the more interesting part. So, this is a patient, for those of you who didn't get to see it, with numular keratitis and um, that's more of a descriptive term than a diagnostic term. Uh, it's a 22-year-old male. He had a history of shingles on the left side of his face in 2014. Um, he told me that it was initial ocular involvement. I'm not really sure at that time if it was actual globe involvement, but it was definitely all around his eye and he had Hutchinson's sign in his nose. Um, he was treated systemically with acyclovir. He has no systemic illnesses. And uh, interestingly, he actually developed a third nerve palsy at this time back in 2014 with this shingles episode that is pretty much completely resolved. So he went a year off of all medicines and really had nothing happen. And last year in August, this is 2015, he had some eye irritation that didn't have pain, but just he noticed his vision was kind of funny. He actually works at an optical place and got the doctor there to look at his eye. <coughs> and um, the doctor essentially said, yeah, you've got probably a shingles flare in your eye. And he started him on acyclovir and sent, them, sent the patient to us at Moran. Um, so when he presented to us, his right eye has been completely unaffected this entire time. His left eye was about 20-30, and he had these multiple large areas of corneal involvement. It was a numular keratitis. It was, there was some thinning, but no severe thinning. And uh, he never really had and has never really had much of an AC or an iritis reaction uh, during this whole entire course. So these are some pictures of what his eye looked like. Um, this you can see especially inferiorly those well demarcated numular lesions and he actually has some stuff superiorly uh, there's another shot this is sort of a better illumination shot so that's pretty classic from a description standpoint of a numular keratitis what it looks like you have that granular uh, central appearance with sort of a ring of um, I guess lipid <laughs> deposits or haze around the outside um, there is uh, um, another shot. So when he saw us, he, uh, he had um, not been on any topical steroids. He was on acyclovir 800 milligrams QID PO. We started him on Predforte QID and said come back in two weeks. Uh, at his two week follow up, he looked pretty inactive and we decreased his acyclovir. He had been on the 800 uh, QID dose for several weeks at this point uh, and we decided to try and taper off of his Predforte topically at that time and said come back in four to six weeks. Came back in four to six weeks, he was again inactive, um, he was off the prednisone, he was doing fine, his vision was stable uh, and we set him out for three months. He came back in three months and was essentially then stable and we decreased his acyclovir one more uh, time to just 800 milligrams PO daily and he was again not on any steroids and we were going to see him for six months but he came back about a month and a half uh, a month and a half later and he noticed the same sort of symptoms um, some blurry vision in his left eye he never really has eye pain because he's got essentially a neurotrophic cornea uh, he had rare cell in his AC um, a new area that looked like it had some activity inferiorly with some haze and edema and his vision had decreased. So we bumped his acyclovir back up to 800 PO QID and restarted Predforte QID. Uh, sent him out for about, a, uh, um, about two weeks and he came back and was essentially the same. Vision was the same. We kind of kept going with the same course and um, that leads him to, to today where he has tapered off of his Predforte sum. He's only on Predforte BID, and he's on acyclovir 800 TID right now. And so, I mean, we're kind of left with the situation where it's a young person with no systemic illnesses. He's got this zoster corneal involvement um, that actually had a flare on acyclovir of 800 daily, um, was not on topical steroids at that time. So some of the questions are, with this guy, what do we do with his, with his acyclovir? Does he need acyclovir and how much? Uh, what about topical preds? What about chronic, or to, sorry, topical steroids? What about chronic prednisone or other steroids in a young person? Um, is that a good idea? Is that a bad idea? What about maybe trying different antivirals or anything else we need to do? And I've already talked with uh, some people about this, some, but I'd be interested in anybody's opinion and, of course, Dr. Dollywell's opinion. So.
dramatic entrance. <laughs> Hopefully that's not going to fly. Out. Okay. Thank you. This is a very interesting case. And actually, I, I touched on herpes simplex virus and zoster in my talk yesterday. So for those people who were there, um, sorry if I'm going to be a little bit redundant. But this, this actually uh, kind of highlights how these two entities need to be kept very separately in terms of your thought process. So let's talk about zoster first, because this is what the patient had. Zoster occurred, right? And this patient had classic uh, V1 distribution of zoster. The patient received full dose antiviral treatment at that time, right? Zoster dosing of acyclovir or one of the associated, you know, val valacyclovir or fanvir. And then uh, resolved. Now, sequelae from zoster. And, and when I think of the, the corneal sequela from zoster in this patient, I think of it more like an interstitial keratitis. <coughs> Numular is basically describing the shape, right? Like a coin shape, <coughs> it could be uh, anything. This is an interstitial zoster-related keratitis. So when you look at each of those lesions, what's really important, if you go back, let's go back to the, to the clinical picture, you can see, uh, yeah, there's that really nice. So when you look at the, the appearance, let's see, is this the laser pointer here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, especially the nasal lesion had uh, significant vessels coursing right into the lesion. And what's this whitish stuff that's in the lesion? Lipid. Right. I was hoping for one of the residents to say <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> but okay. <laughs> anyway, that's right, Dr. Hoffman. All right, awesome. So, uh, <laughs> okay. So, yeah, so it's lipid. It's from the leaky blood vessels from the interstitial keratitis, right? So, now, so this is zoster. The reason this, these lesions are occurring are because of the vessels, right, that are coming in. At this point, all you need to do is use steroids. I don't feel that there's a role for oral antivirals anymore because this is zoster. So what I would do in this patient is I would use FML. I would not use PRED because there's no iritis component. There's no intraocular information. FML is a very nice, strong steroid on the ocular surface. So I would switch this patient to FML. I would, you know, depending on the vessels, I would titrate. I might start a QID and then for a month, and I want those vessels to close. And then we just slowly decrease the steroid dose until we can get basically closure of these of these vessels <coughs> and, um, and and prevent any further leakage uh, of the lipid. And in terms, so that's zoster, okay? And sometimes these patients need to be you know, like maybe one drop of FML every other day, something like that, just to keep everything quiet. In terms of visual rehabilitation for this patient, I would definitely not do a transplant because he's neurotrophic. I instead would recommend a scleral contact lens. That would be a wonderful um, optical kind of rehabilitation method in him because Remember, the scleral lens is going to vault over the cornea, so it's not going to create any abrasions or erosions. It's actually going to bathe the cornea in fluid all day, and, uh, and he'll see beautifully with that scleral contact lens. So he was excited when we already talked to him about this option. He said, oh, great, you know, this is, then he can see again, and, and he should be relatively stable. So I would um, take him off the oral antivirals and then and just you know, switch him to FML. Okay, let me just talk quickly about herpes simplex because that's a completely different disease entity. That's when I use antivirals pretty chronically in the patients that have recurrences. So in herpes simplex virus, it's really important to continue that, uh, that oral antiviral prophylaxis because when they get reactivation, if they have steroids on board, 
you know, I have that picture of, of kind of fire and the cornea. If, if putting steroids on a cornea that has live virus, live herpes simplex virus, is like pouring gasoline on a fire. It's a disaster. So in those cases, you use the oral prophylaxis just in case they're going to get some reactivation of the virus. Okay? So uh, you just really have to, in your mind, differentiate these two herpes uh, disease entities. And then when you think of simplex, always think in terms of is there live virus on the eye or not? Is this an immune condition or not? Okay, thank you. Any other comments on that? Both not? Yes, sir. Did you hear me? No. So, so sometimes science is a funny way of progressing. The whole of winter stay last winter in, uh, in England, in Liverpool, I'm having a cup of tea with my friend Stephen Kay. And I said to him, I use laser beads to close vessels on. And I have a micro laser that I've developed. Why can't we close these vessels on? Here. Of course, the usual discussion. You may damage the eye, you may cause uh, ischemia, you may traumatize the iris, you could, in theory, damage the angle. Based upon that, we're sitting there with a social visitor. He's a corneal expert, and the last thing is that we're sort of sharing this. To say, to cut the long story short, what came of that is. We did some dye studies of the vessels that grow up in the cornea. And he then started using the old fashioned way that we used to use closed veins on the legs micro needles. And so his last uh, oh, few months now, he's, he's done that and he's published some preliminary reports. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with his work. Uh, Harminder Dua has been doing it for uh, quite a while. Right. Using a needle. A micro needle. To, yes, things. a micro needle in so there for years. At, uh, using yeah. the uh, the uh, 540 dial like laser now and cutting down the power to see if we can do that even more accurately than putting a needle into these vessels. The vascular closure with a micro needle is something that Stephen has been fairly successful. And we're hoping that the laser beam might be pulled the next step forward. And if you can close these vessels off, and you could possibly prevent the long term changes. So, this is ongoing work, and it's funny how science progresses with casual conversation between specialties. Thanks, 